You actually, when you won the Welsh, you you said on on, on TV that that you you and te- we'll go back to sort of technical that you you felt you're suffering from the yips. I mean, yeah, as, yeah. as someone myself who who still suffers and and, and basically ended my career, um, how how serious it how is it form with you? How how does it go into your cue action? Very similar to maybe like yourself. I think I texted you maybe a couple of years ago trying to maybe get a bit of advice and a bit of help because it was pretty bad a couple of years ago where right. very similar to yourself and a bit like ding and that kind of thing where you're actually coming through the ball quick instead of being able to pause. Right. That's what I, that's yeah, what yeah, I yeah. do a lot of. So if, it, if there's any kind of power shots that I'm maybe not feeling 100% confident on because of my technique or, you know, deep screw shots and things like that, you'll you'll yeah. be able to probably... You know, well, sympathise with this quite a bit. If, if, if you find out the solution, tell me because I still haven't <laughs> found it. Well, I haven't, but I, I've managed to stick to something that I'm thinking is working for us generally. Mm-hmm. But they they still come in every now and again, but nowhere near right. as much as they were. So it's so this it's is helping. fascinating. Like mm-hmm. I think any non-player is always fascinated to hear about the the yips. Is it is it must be hard to describe, but it's just a sort of physical resistance well, to actually taking the shot right just there's like there's like different versions of it isn't there so yeah. some players actually the, the other way of doing it other players can't actually deliver the cue they just end up yeah. waiting there at the back and they can't they can't put it through whereas yeah me and maybe steven get some of this and ding and uh there's a couple of other players i can think of on the tour that i won't name mm-hmm. as well but they're the they're the ones that you look at and you go wow is it that quick <laughs> like yeah. you know like do, do you ever it's, get it's to horrible. Stage where i got to a stage where i was i was playing the wrong shots because i wanted to avoid playing certain shots that i knew i couldn't play is that yeah. does that good does that crept into your game i mean i don't want to give it all negative you've you had a fantastic season bro, and we're, we're, we're <laughs> yeah. coming down on this negative stuff but but it, but, totally yeah. it's really interesting like there's, there's dart players that can't like can't even let go of the dart and, and golf like any individual sport you'll hear people talk about these moments where mentally you just can't get your body yeah. to do it do you know what? I, I don't mind. I don't mind talking about it because I've mm. done it for so long now, and I've I've almost gotten to the point in my head where I'm like, you know, I don't care anymore. Like, yeah. in a way, do you know, I don't mind talking about it. I, I'm happy for people to hear about, you know, yeah. us having problems like that. And yeah, it it, it is. It's horrible. It's like you don't know what to do. You play the wrong shot, as you say, Stephen, and you're yeah. like, you know, you're playing the wrong shot, and you sometimes you may get pundits or commentators go he's went about that a weird way it's not that i don't know the right way to go about it it's that as steven said you're sometimes avoiding a shot because you just think yeah. i can't play that shot if i yeah. if i play that shot i've got to chuck myself at it because i can't control myself properly and i should yeah. be able well, to yeah. so well i mean yeah, i mean you wouldn't believe that the, the, the shots that like are, are so simple that I, w- I would avoid i mean it was just incredible i mean li- literally a shot that someone in the club could play go on, give and us I an example and um so a shot that used to, that used to frighten the life out of me would be a a black into what pocket uh, a black into bag one, which is left to right pot like, like just off straight. If I had to hold that cue ball for a red, or just like I, I mean I just couldn't I'm I'm, I'm like, I, I, I couldn't get the cue through. Right. I wouldn't I wouldn't be able to have a nice start and it would be like and I just. Yeah, just a jab. Would, yeah, yeah. So I'd end up having it? to like uh, the cue ball would end up in bulk sometimes. I mean, it was just <laughs> like it was horrific because obviously you have played that shot thousands of times. Yeah, you've won everything the you've black, won. I mean, so yeah, just interested in where it comes from, but nobody knows, do they? It's just, it's just it's, maybe it uh, is. It started off for me. One shot happened about it was about two thousand. I mean, twenty years before or ten years before I retired, it was just one shot happened. I thought, oh, that didn't feel right. That was horrible. I didn't even get through or anything. And then that sort of sticks with you, and then like you forget about it, and then maybe two months later, the same shot happens again. You think, oh, and then another shot. Is that what happens to you? Yeah, like, Gary. Well, yeah, one, yeah. one shot, then another shot, then another shot. I think the way I kind of seen it, and this, this is probably the other perspective where you, you try not to be too negative on yourself, and you mm. try and think of it logically. And the way I've tried to work it out is possibly, and I don't know if this is relating to you when it started happening with you, is that. Obviously, a lack of confidence comes into it a little bit because mm-hmm. for whatever reason, you might just not be feeling great on that day. Yeah, yeah. As you say, when you've had that shot wave and, oh, that didn't feel right, you maybe mm. weren't quite as confident on the shot for yeah. whatever reason. Yeah, conditions, yeah. silly things like table conditions, yet maybe the table's drifting off and you're not sure of the shot. So you're, you're losing faith in that. You're losing yeah. faith in the grip of the cloth. Oh, the pockets look tight today. Yeah. Anything like that. And you can, as soon as you start losing so you faith in what you're doing, yeah. And then that, that yeah. can start it off. So it starts physical, as you've said before, I think. And then it ends up being mental because it becomes a habit, doesn't it? So you, yeah, I, that's it's really very hard to break. Yeah. I, I've, I've read psychologists saying it is to do with 
you know, a lot of the time, if you get as good as you guys are at snooker, it becomes basically almost automatic. You're not really thinking about it for long periods. And then it's when your brain starts to come, you start mm. you're thinking about it too much. I think it's quite a lot of, I've read quite a bit about it. And it's the same with people like drummers or anyone that's doing something again and again and again like that. You, you sort of, you don't mm. have to think about how you're doing it. And then there are these moments where, like you say, something makes you think about it and suddenly you're like, it just feels all wrong. It's, it's almost yeah. anything you do like that in life. If you, if you, thinking too much about what you're actually doing your brain can sort of go well, the, 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 the only way you can you're the only way you can play great snookers you've got nothing going on you're not thinking about anything that's the exactly. only way you go yeah you, it's, it's autopilot the minute you use you you got a, a thought like mine was my grip hand the grip hand this is a problem i, I mean if i could cut that off i mean i used to think i'll cut my hand off i used to <laughs> i used to experiment with just having three fingers on and two like two anything just to experiment and it was like and, oh that works that feels good but then the next day it felt terrible can I ask you a random question, Stephen? Of course. As you've just mentioned, your grip there. You've always been, and I don't know if you ever noticed you did this. Someone must have told you this in the past mm. before. Did, did you realise you used to play with your thumb straight down, you know, in your grip uh, hand? You know, no, a lot of people would grab the cue with their thumb sort of round like that. Your yeah. thumb was like that. Did oh, you ever really? notice that? Yeah. No. You've never well, noticed that, 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 that. That must have been one of the, the 20 technical things i tried <laughs> <laughs> yeah. he's going to be thinking about his thumb next time he plays that's for sure yeah, there you go. Mark, when I, you're on stage mark do you have a problem like delivering the punch line do you like, are you, the, <laughs> yeah. like maybe the, the punch line you're just like oh, oh i can't get <laughs> yeah you get halfway into it and then you think i'm not going to finish this sentence i'm just <laughs> I, I, I do sometimes i think i've experienced a similar thing where just occasionally you get a sort of it's not quite anxiety but again that thing of like you, your brain is suddenly going what are we doing here you look around the room and you're never really on autopilot when you're on stage but there is an element of just again i know what i'm doing i don't have to think about it too much and again if you do if you do stop and think just occasionally yeah, you make eye problem. contact with an audience yeah. member and you think why have you come out to watch me again it's, it's that thing it's like <laughs> you can do it hundreds of times but then one time a weird thought gets into your brain and like you say the brain forms these patterns 